Hello, Tracy here from the Wildlife Garden. Um, a bit of a catch up on the bee situation in the garden. Um, we were without bees from the last video until about a week ago. I started noticing the odd bumblebee. Here we are at the lavender patch and <laughs> I've scared them off. But there are, oh, there they are. There are some bees appearing in the garden. Um, card bee there, lovely, beautiful card bee and a male red tail there the male red tail has a yellow band behind its head and the and the red tail where the female is just jet black with a red tail um a beautiful queen bumblebee here look lots of uh, buff tails we've had some uh, garden bees uh sorry not garden bees early bumblebees a female and a male the female is quite worn so i presume she's got a nest um so quite a relief that they're reappearing, not in the number that we would normally have on this lavender. I mean, it would be absolutely just buzzing. And as you can see, there's probably there's about five max at the moment. Um, also, my uh, very old and worn out old Budlia has also attracted bees. Uh, if I panel. Hopefully you'll be able to see. Let's see if I can zoom in on anything. I can't at the moment. They're up because of the you've been let me move around. Um because it's a white sky it's causing obviously a contrast so but yeah the Budley is getting some bees on. I think you might be able to see one there. Yeah, one there. But the there's there's several bees on there. Um Oh, it's just a relief really there's one buzzing behind me now there it is how lovely is that so oh there's a is that a female oh, orange tip oh let's see what's that no it's another male orange tip look at that oh my goodness that's on the oregano I love oregano well most of the bumblebees do uh, we've still got one or two solitary bees about we've had male um, leaf cutter today and the oh hello bee you're more than welcome in our garden <laughs> there's one flying around me there visiting my um, uh, flower here look much in focus there we go so yeah a relief but we haven't got the number of insects lovely female blackbird up the garden there we haven't got the number of insects we normally have in the garden the joe pie plant is attracting them again there's a honeybee in the background the joe pie plant's got so tall this year it's ridiculous it's i mean i'm five foot three and this plant must be six foot two at least if not six foot four in the center it's gone crazy absolutely crazy i mean i'm having to really lift you up um not really in the best position because it's causing a bit of a shadow over this end of the garden but um oh, i'm just so relieved that the bees are back and i'm just hoping that this next brood obviously they're the queens from the earlier bees that were missing from our garden i'm just hoping that um obviously they'll be able to produce the queens will be able to produce well next year really i'm gonna wait so wait and see isn't it really but yeah so although the bees are back there are very still very few insects in the garden um oh, i just see something really pleasing here uh, it's an instar there it is it's an instar of oh if i can focus it um an instar of a shield bug Ooh, too close maybe a bit too close sorry about that i'm not the expert with videoing let's see if we can there we go and uh, yeah, they, I mean, even the shield bugs have been missing from the garden. The most notable thing missing has been flies. And right on cue, there's a fly. Um, quite dopey today because it's a bit cool. 
I can get it in. Oh, there it goes, the green bottle fly. And the other most notable thing missing is uh, is the um, cuckoo spit, very little cuckoo spit. Um, as I've panned out and I'm talking to you, I can see one, two, three, four, four in star uh, shield bugs. So that's good news. And I've I have been doing a bit of work in the garden today, and I've seen other in shield uh, uh, in star shield bugs. So that's something good happening. Let's have a stroll up the garden. Uh, it's very dry, obviously, with the lack of rain and the heat that we've experienced last week. A lot of my plants got completely scorched. They will survive, but um, not till next year will they come back into leaf. I'm reversing because I'm going to just pan up and you can see how many berries are on, on the rowan tree. It's a bit windy today. I'm hoping my fluffy mouse mic is stopping the sound of wind blowing all over the mic. Um, yeah, so yeah, bo bone dry. The saddest thing is, lots of ragwort, not seeing a cinnabar caterpillar, not seeing a cinnabar moth at all yet. Still a, you know, still a chance of some, but hmm, I'm not holding out much hope. I was really excited this morning when I came into the garden because I spotted that something had been eating this one. I thought, oh, they're here, they're here, but no, there's nothing on it. So something has had a munch on that one, but I'm not sure what. So, yeah, um, I know it's a controversial plant, um, ragwort, but we live back, bang smack in the middle of Birmingham and, well, not in Birmingham, on the outskirts of Birmingham. It's just like it, an industrial urban area. No cows by us at all. We used to have cows by us. There's a hill in the background, if I can film it up the top of the garden, can't see it from here, um, called Rowley Hill. Oh, I hope that wind's not <laughs> um, causing problems. Rowley Hill, we are quite high up. We're near West Bromwich Albion ground, one of the, well, West Bromwich Albion ground is the highest football pitch in the country. Um, in England, possibly, not the country. I would imagine there might be a higher one in Scotland, not sure. Don't know much about football, let alone where the pitches are. Um, yeah, um, Rowley Hill used to have a little farm on there, but that's that went years and years ago. Um, so, yeah, no, no cattle near me at all. Um, but yeah, I, I'm just, I'm still, you know, I'm not, I'm happy the bees have returned, but I'm not, I'm not completely relieved because as I say, there's lots of insects missing, hoverflies notably, uh, missing. But anyway, I was doing a bit of work in this section of the garden, got lots of pots here. Um, I'll just show you, there's a path. <laughs> I call it a path, we don't use it. Um, the cherry tree, the enormous cherry tree. Here she is. And she's looking beautiful. She will flower gorgeously next year, without a doubt. Um, the beautiful cherry tree, <laughs> her roots are now just, well, it's destroyed this path completely and utterly. Um, so obviously, and it's so dry because of the trees, because I've got... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, five enormous trees in the garden. Three enormous birch trees, this one being the, the nobliest. We have that box on. I'm not sure if you can pick up the back box. And um, obviously the ground's very, very dry. Very, very dry. So I do struggle a lot with plants. So I, I tend to use pots a lot. Um, as you can see, there's a large pot there. It's got a hebe in and a clematis. It's a winter flowering clematis. Um, yeah, and the ragwort self-seeded. We we have lost in the last year two, in, three, sorry, enormous, absolutely enormous brownfield sites. Uh, the one closest to us just around the road um, by the canal it was covered in ragwort with the beautiful ragwort well obviously all the caterpillars that used to feed on this plant disappeared um, so yeah I'm glad it's seeded in my garden it's self seeded uh, a small uh, well a patch just up here it's, in, it's very tall this year there it is it's highest it's about a 
it's about five foot tall um and obviously the seeds off that have uh, spread around the garden and i've got one two three four five six seven about eight eight pieces at the moment of uh, ragwort and may, may continue and anyway it's only harmful to cows and cattle or horses if they eat it and they only eat it if it's got in the hay um dried out got caught up in the hay machine in the hay making and um obviously then it can be a danger to them anyway i'm rambling and rambling because i have moans i'm afraid but anyway here we are so this is the pot area um the pots needed rearranging we're having a trouble getting through i've got a bird bath here is my retirement gift from my my uh, school that I used to work at. I've moved that in. I'm just about to give it a good scrub and fill it back up. It used to be in this spot here, where the black pot is, a little bit further forward. Um, but I've planted a lovely rose that I brought a while ago. It was a dead, almost dead in the in the shop, and I planted it in the wrong place. And I want that to get lots of light, so I've sort of changed the pots around a bit. Um, yeah, uh, a lot of them have cut, I've cut back to try and encourage reflowering, then the pita and um, the um, uh, knapweed and things like that. I'm trying to encourage them to come back again, just do a second little flush. The roses um, I've been cutting back, I need to cut that one back. Um, this one's covered in bud, so and the bees really like this little rose. It's only a tiny little rose, as you can see. It's about the size of my uh, thumb nail, um, but the bees love it. Got these, these two of these from Aldi, Aldi a long time ago. Um, yeah, really popular with the bees. So um, a bit more deadheading on that, and uh, we'll get some more. Um, this lovely uh, bell nettle flower, the uh, here. This has been um, absolutely, it's a, an, a must for uh, certain, oh, there's a solitary bee coming out, certain solitary bees. Um, they sleep in it at night and, um, yeah, they're, they're the only ones that use it. That's the orange, the, the gold-tailed melitta bee that's just gone in there. It's female, very worn, but it's the main plant, it's the main plant food source for her. The scissor bee, which is even smaller than her, t absolutely tiny little bee, relies on this little plant. So if you can get nettle bell flower, I highly recommend it. Um, yeah, so that's it really. I think I've rambled on enough. Uh, the garden slowly, well, not slowly, I think it's going quite quickly into an autumn feel. <laughs> the apple tree is laden with apples does need that piece it goes up into the sky putting back next year we're going to sort that out next year and reduce the height a bit um, and everything is hunky-dory bees are returning not in the number that I would like them to be uh, a few more insects appearing but yeah been a, a worrying few weeks to say the least uh, pond's empty of tadpoles. I've been looking in there today and I've not seen any tadpoles. Normally I have a few tadpoles left but none this year so frogs will be in it later when I come up in the evening. There's usually frogs popping up and croaking in there. Yeah so some of the plants got terribly scorched as I said by the heat uh, last week. Ridiculous heat. Um, but yeah everything seems to be okay. I'm just looking at this daisy. I think I've been, I think I've caused it a bit of a problem. I'll give it a good water and see if I can get it to revive. Right, sorry, I'm looking at the plants and not looking at the camera. I'm good at doing that. So there we are, Tracy's wildlife garden on this blustery, balmy day uh, with a few bees returning. So I hope if you've had bees missing from your garden, they're beginning to return. And um, yeah, I'll uh, catch up with you next time, in a, perhaps in a, a month's time, once the garden's really sort of uh, gone over. 
I have a feeling we're going to have a very early autumn as it's so dry. Okie dokie, I'll shut up now. <laughs> Alright, take care everyone. See you soon. Bye.